the next group that we have is assessing city-owned properties in Pittsburgh. This group was led by Dr. David Miller from the Graduate School of Public and International Affairs and spearheaded here uh, within our department by our, our colleague, uh, Laura Meixel. So uh, with that, this group has taken a look at a city, a variety of city property information that currently resides in a variety of different departments. And what the team has been able to do is to aggregate that information into a synthesized database that is easier to view and also has provided some really significant recommend recommendations for us to consider uh, as department leaderships with regards to how we manage data going forward. Um, so with that, I'd like to invite up um, uh, excuse me, Rick Hopkinson and Ellie Newman uh, to present the Assessing City-Owned Properties in Pittsburgh. So, Rick, Ellie? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ellie Newman, and this is Rick Hopkinson, and we're here from the University of Pittsburgh's GISPIA program, and our project was inventorying um, 303 city-owned properties. So where we were when we started, um, the city had a very fragmented and sort of decentralized system for managing its buildings. So, you know, different departments had different spreadsheets or websites where they kept various information, but if something changed in one department spreadsheet, that information was not updated across the whole city. Um, and so they realized that this was really holding them back as far as, um, you know, seeing how they could reduce energy use, seeing how they could operate more efficiently and things like that. Um, so that's where we came in. So our goal was to take this very fragmented system and create an integrated, um, integrated database um, that would synthesize all of that information. Um, so the deliverables that we came up with, one was the database. We also did a codebook and database manual. We created a GIS map layer, and then we also did some pre preliminary uh, energy analysis and benchmarking report. Uh, so this is a screenshot of my laptop when I opened everything that we got at the very beginning. So as you can see, um, some of these spreadsheets, one of them just had firehouses and the years that they were built. One of them had um, some energy information and addresses, and some had energy information um, on a website. So it was really all kind of, you know, all over the place, really. And so we went from this to this new database system. Um, so this is just a, a snapshot of what the database looks like. Um, this here is one of the police headquarters, and you can see that we have a photograph. We actually had a team of students that drove all around Pittsburgh and took photographs of all the buildings that they could find. Um, so I think we have pictures for something like 150 buildings. Um, and then there's different tabs within this. So one of them has building usage, so what departments use the building, how many square feet, things like that. Um, and another one is energy information. Um, we got energy information from the city's portfolio manager energy benchmarking website uh, for the year 2013. Um, so this is a uh, snapshot of what the codebook looks like. Um, so oftentimes if you outsource a project like this, um, you get this new piece of software or what have you, and then you sit down to use it and realize that you actually have no idea what any of this means. And so we didn't want that to happen. Um, we created a code book that goes variable by variable and explains how we got the data, where it came from, any flaws or any problems with collecting the information. Um, and then the manual piece of it explains how to use it. So if someone isn't as comfortable with access and they want to just have a spreadsheet, you can easily export just the fields that you want um, and take it from there. If you decide you want to add more fields or things like that, the manual explains exactly how to do that. With the energy data that um, the city has through Portfolio Manager, which is a way to record um, their, their energy usage through their energy bills, they create what they call um, energy usage intensity, and that is normalized by the square footage of the building, so it makes it comparable. And this is just a shot of the different um, energy usage intensities of the different buildings in, in the city of Pittsburgh. And then we also create a GIS map that um, sort of plots um, the highest and lowest um, energy efficient buildings in the city. So notice up here the Medic 10 that's pretty high. I think we put um, the top five, the top five biggest energy consumers. We actually labeled on the map all over Bathhouse, um, Shenley Park, Skating Rink. Um, go ahead. And like Ellie alluded to, um, most of 
our time spent with this project was really um, creating this database um, and, and creating three unique identifiers that the departments can use to um, search for buildings and compare across departments. So you have the building code, you have the parcel ID number and the lot and block number. Uh, but we also wanted to provide the city with some recommendations on what they can do to move forward to, um, you know, in increase um, their energy efficiency. So that's where sort of some of the benchmarking came in. So we looked at some different cities um, across the United States um, who have already passed um, energy benchmarking disclosure ordinances, and we also looked at a couple international cities. What we found was a lot of the cities in the United States, um, although they have really ambitious goals um, that are admirable, so a lot of them want to reduce their um, greenhouse gas emissions by, let's say, 80% by 2050, um, there was really no clear path um, on how to accomplish that. So that's why we looked at the Toronto report. We found um, the Toronto report being the most interesting um, they, they created in 2014. And that actually, um, they use what they term performance-based conservation. So what they do is they divide all their different publicly owned buildings by type. So, so they classify them. So like you see right here, these are um, all the pools and pool buildings. Um, this is for the city of Pittsburgh. And why they create these use classi classifications is because some of these buildings, I mean, they're inherently different, right? You know, the pools aren't going to um, use the same amount of, or have the same type of use as, let's say, fire halls or even an administration building. So this allows them to sort of benchmark these buildings um, against each other. Um, we'll go to the next slide. And we also have firehouses here, too. Um, and we also created a, a, a national um, median for these buildings, just so the city sees where they compare um, from a national standpoint. Um, the, so the Pittsburgh median for firehouses is 154.6 um, EUI, and the national is 154.4, um, so extremely close. And the city of Pittsburgh's doing very well with their um, firehouses. But you do have these buildings um, down here that are, are basically consuming more energy than you know they, they, they probably should. So go to the next slide. So what Toronto does, um, and the city can decide how exactly they do want to benchmark. We do recommend. Um, you know, these different use classifications. But Toronto benchmarks to their top 25% um, of energy performers. So what Toronto would want to do and what the city of Pittsburgh might want to adopt is try to get all of these firehouses um, to that 112 EUI, that last, um, that last building over there. So mainly, to summarize our findings, um, so we, we highly recommend this performance-based conservation because for us, it, it's a really meaningful way to um, benchmark th uh, the buildings. Um, it's also important to ensure all the data is accurate. I think we did a pretty good job with classifying the buildings, but of course, you know, all the department heads, they know, they know their buildings the best, so they might want to just um, you know, make sure that they're comfortable with those classifications, um, maybe rearrange some classifications so, so you can um, have a meaningful starting point. And then finally, um, sort of goes without saying, but focusing on the really high impact projects, like those, for example, those firehouses that are the worst performing, you want to get them up to speed first and you know, save some dollars. And then that could possibly be, um, you know, the, those monies could be segregated into like a special revenues fund. Um, the savings can be transferred from the general funds um, and that could possibly fund um, future initiatives. So as far as um, the next steps go for the city, so if the city was going to do a capstone with the University of Pittsburgh, again, um, we would recommend maybe creating a team to dig a little bit deeper into some of these use classifications. So again, I'm going to talk about you know, firehouses or maybe even police stations. Um, you might want to get a team to actually go out and visit some of these buildings and see what are some characteristics of the lowest performers and the highest performers. Um, you, know, you might find that the, the, the low performers are in need of some capital improvements, or you might find that um, it's actually behavior or cultural modification, so just like turning out the lights or maybe switching to LED or something like that. Um, and, and I think it would be a nice pilot um, before the, they, they do their full launch and, and a good learning experience to pick one department. So we want to thank the city for the opportunity to work on this project and we um, are happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. Question. Yes. Hi, my name is Jim Sloss, Deputy Director of IMP and I had a question about the database and its expandability. Uh, what kind of fields uh, are, are within and, and, and what, what are we looking at? Yeah, I mean, the database is your tool, so anything that you think is useful, you can add. Um, it's helpful if you can add fields that have building codes already attached, because that's kind of the, the one thing that was constant across all of these fields. So we had um, 2013 total energy use and energy costs for the full year. So if you wanted to do a monthly average or if you wanted to add historical energy data, that's something that can easily be done in just a few minutes. Uh, 
Hi, I'm Kaz Pellegrini, project manager um, of the architecture division in Public Works. I just want to compliment you guys on your project because of uh, what I saw several weeks ago. I was really nervous about what you might come up <laughs> with because I thought I was going to get plastered with lots and lots of data, but you did an excellent job in making it visual too, and it makes a really um, easy job of my group pinpointing and Henry Cafardi's group, the facilities division, pinpoint those buildings we need to attack in a glance for next year's uh, budget and subsequent years. So great job, thank you. And thank I you. hope we can get a disc of that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.